Aloha, my friends, and welcome to the Mermaid Chronicles. We have been speaking in this series about different realms of incarnated earth angels, and today we're going to speak about elementals, fairies, and nature spirits. Nature spirits build and maintain the natural world that we live in. They are like nature's artists since they take instructions from angels and they use these instructions to create matter out of thought in the world of nature. For example, a flower fairy creates the perfect rose using instructions or blueprints for the perfect rose given by an angel. The great spiritual scientist and founder of anthroposophy, Rudolf Steiner, said that humans must tune into the angelical hierarchy and their messages in order for humanity to evolve. And that message, of, of course, is that we are not just material beings. Everything is made of consciousness, and we are to evolve to higher spiritual spheres, to higher consciousness, and to connect the material and spiritual worlds. Steiner said that if humans do not take the path of conscious connection with the angelical realms, these realms will be forced into an unconscious relationship with mankind, which would be a very terrible evolutionary step and would make man go towards destruction. So the main focus of the angels' work right now is to teach mankind about our true spiritual nature, that we are all brothers and sisters, that we are all souls evolving together, and that we can access the divine directly. The angels and ascended masters are trying to teach humans to love, and with this love we are meant to be caretakers of the planet and of all of her beings. We can easily speak telepathically to plants, trees, animals, elementals, to all living beings, and we can give them love from our hearts and souls. This is what we are supposed to do as human beings. I, I know this and I feel this. When I'm in nature, I can feel nature telling me this. So I know that this is true. So the nature spirits have their own hierarchy. Every realm or kingdom has its own hierarchy. <clears throat> nature spirits take care of plants and they help the plants and vegetables grow. Ele elementals take care of animals and humans because we humans are a sort of animal as well, we're mammals. And the devas rule over the elementals. Devas oversee, deva means shining one in Sanskrit, and devas oversee the plants, animals, forests, mountains, and oceans. They work with the angels, and they give the blueprints to the elves and the other elementals to build the natural kingdom. Flower fairies help the flowers to grow. They have little pointy ears and pointy noses. And dryads and fawns are the tree spirits, who live in the tree, taking care of its divine and beautiful energy. They are very affectionate and calm. Trees have always been very sacred to the wise ones, like the druids, who made their temples in forest groves. And these temples of trees as forest groves, they're very important to Earth's evolution and to Earth's well-being. Trees are very magical beings. Gnomes work with the earth and the tree roots. They live at the root of trees. And brownies are spirits responsible for helping humans around their farms and whatnot. There are also so many other kinds of elementals that I haven't mentioned who make beautiful multi-dimensional music, who make crafts, and who, who do endless things in nature. They're all around us all the time. <clears throat> the Earth herself is also a living being, and she absorbs, absorbs toxins from air, from water, from fire, from us, and she transmutes them with her love. So we can send our energies directly into Mother Earth daily, and we can have these energies alchemically transformed into love energy. <clears throat> now, there is a really wonderful book called The Etheric Double about the etheric body by a theosophist named Arthur Powell. Now, theosophy is a really beautiful uh, philosophy or um, teaching that seeks to know the wonder of the natural world and the divine. So, in this book, he explains that the earth is transparent to etheric vision if our inner eye is open and we can see into the earth and we can also see through the bodies of humans and animals which are all transparent to etheric sight. We can also see elemental beings with this sight. And there's a very special life force energy 
in every part of nature, oceans, mountains, forests, waterfalls, they all have their own special type of etheric and astral life energy. And if we spend time in these places, they pour out very intense vibrations that awaken our own etheric and astral and even causal or mental bodies, which is incredibly energizing, very recharging, and very healing for us humans. And it, it, what it does is it literally tangle, it combs out the entanglements of the astral and etheric bodies, making us sensitive to these magnetic currents. In other words, spending time in nature with trees, with forests, literally hugging trees, letting our body touch the earth, sleeping under pine trees, really strengthens our spiritual faculties and our spiritual bodies, our inner bodies. And I'll do other videos in the future explaining the etheric, astral, and causal bodies. So we need to spend time in nature. Um, now, that was a little bit about elementals in the elemental realm. Now, when elementals incarnate as humans, they look very much like the realms that they're from. Fairies, elves, pixies, gnomes, unicorns, undines, and they have fairies as their spirit guides, in addition to angels and other guides that all humans have. Unlike incarnated angels, elementals love to break rules and they love to play. They are very mischievous and they love to make jokes and be very naughty. They have a much more fiery, passionate disposition. They're often very artistic, musical, or sometimes they're into comedy. They can be very flirtatious, promiscuous, and very naughty. They're very childlike and they hate rules, unlike incarnated angels. <clears throat> Whereas angels have feathered wings, elementals have dragonfly or butterfly wings. And they often are addicted to alcohol or other substances, sadly, which the angels, of course, are busy trying to heal and rescue. I mean, incarnated angels. So you'll see relationship between angels and elementals where the angel is the codependent trying to heal the addict. That often happens. Um, and in the nature kingdom, the elementals party a lot at night, singing, dancing, laughing, and they actually have parties to send love energy to heal Mother Earth. And sometimes they like to have humans uh, interact as part of these parties to also engage in this loving, healing energy for Mother Earth. So when, incar when these elementals incarnate on Earth, they often become actors, musicians, artists, entertainers, and comedians. Um, they, now, whereas we were saying that angels tend to have more voluptuous bodies or tend to gain weight, elementals don't tend to have this problem except for mermaids. They're one of the hybrid realms that also are voluptuous. And elementals are also often in relationship with the wise one realm, which we spoke of in the last video. Um, they've had a connection for many lifetimes and ages working together, so they're often together in relationships. And elementals are here on Earth to help with the environment, the oceans, they usually feel very passionately for animal rights. Um, and they need, we already mentioned, they need a lot of time in nature to recharge or they become very depressed. They also need to avoid chemicals and toxins because they're very sensitive, like all incarnated um, realms of angels are. They also need to play and have fun. They need to get in touch with their inner child and let themselves enjoy and have fun. They often prefer the company of animals and plants to the company of humans. So if you really prefer animals to humans, you may naturally be an elemental. And um, they can be very shy, private, loners, and introverts. Even though they like to party at times, they don't often trust a lot of people and they prefer to spend time alone or with animals or nature. And when they're in relationships, Elementals can be very attractive because they're very cute and they're very charming, they're artistic and they're funny, but they can also end up being non-committal or immature, and um, like I said, in the nature realm, they're very promiscuous or flirtatious at times. So they can naturally manifest whatever they want and they really need to work on manifesting what they need here on Earth because they don't do well in the work-a-day world and the, you know, they're not really nine-to-five kind of people. Um, so they need to use their manifesting abilities to come out of the depression of living in that sort of nine to five world. They do really well working outdoors in nature, working with animals, working as healers, um, teachers. Of course, I was already mentioning artists, entertainers of all kind, that works well for them. And they need to be, like I said, in nature, hugging trees, working with plants, flowers, the ocean, 
and animals. They are, they are most happy and fulfilled when they're protecting nature, giving back to nature. Um, they have to be careful about their tempers because they can send out fireballs when they're angry and it, it can show up in the form of a psychic attack on people which needs to be removed so they have to be careful with that. Um, it's also really recommended for elementals to detox from addictive substances such as alcohol or any other kind of um, drugs, things like that, because in the end they're going to feel not really happy if their bodies are full of toxins. They're going to feel much happier if they're free of toxins, clean, and just clearer. They can get much higher spending time in nature or meditating, serving other people, doing meditation, etc. Personally, I've found um, in working in my own life and working with my clients that addictions are best released by coming deep into contact with your repressed feelings and releasing traumas because addictions are usually a way to numb painful feelings like deep hurt, grief, loneliness, sadness, rage, shame, etc. Rudolf Steiner said that one of the most important things in today's society is to make the feeling life of man conscious, to be conscious of our feelings because our addictions are actually driven emotionally. They're driven by unmet emotional needs and traumas. In my lifetime, I found various tools to deal with my own emotional traumas, including the very par powerful technology called sequential homeopathy, which uses energy medicine that goes deep into the mental, emotional, and physical bodies to remove all deep emotional traumas and wounds since birth, and it removes them sequentially from the present to the past. It's very powerful, and I still use it on myself today um, and on other people as well. Um, I also found a really amazing etheric healing technique called holodynamics which goes deep into the etheric body and transforms negative emotions to light by releasing and transforming old soul, soul fragments. It's, it's like shamanism which is a form of soul retrieval, same thing, different, just a little different. Um, we go directly inside and connect to our inner child fragments and to our inner masculine, inner feminine, etc. And we, we uh, transform them to light, you could say. There are other techniques as well, but these are just the ones that have worked really deeply on my own self, and I use them on myself and others in healing sessions. So I will do other videos on these technologies. I'm also going to um, try the best I can to teach them through videos, but uh, otherwise feel free to write me if you have questions. And in the next video on um, incarnated angels, we are going to talk about the realm of mermaids. So see you next time. Aloha.